What up everyone, it's your boy Joel Sid and in this part, this is part 2 where I interview Celia Litwin who is a founder and CEO of a company called Psycaps and her team has developed this app called EQ. So in our first segment we talked about the science and her team how she got to this. In this segment we'll be talking about the challenges, obstacles she personally has encountered during her journey. So it's easy to talk about entrepreneurship when you are far off, but it's totally a different ball game when you are in it, and especially if your profession is to help people. So see the things from a perspective of someone who's a psychologist, how they are tackling day-to-day -day challenges. And here she'll be talking about the strategies and the hacks she personally used to overcome some of these challenges. I'm excited to share this with you, so let's do this. And being an entrepreneur and a psychologist, yeah. you, you know, like people yeah. go through emotional ups, ups and downs, right? Uh, high level of uncertainty, yeah. high level yeah. of anxiety. How did yeah. you overcome when you were going through yeah. those things? Yeah, yeah. I have to say that um, I, especially, I, I just finished a crowdfunding round and okay. I have never been more stressed in my life. I do not suggest. Wow. Okay. <laughs> It was it was so stressful. Um, we were successful, thankfully, but that was a month where I almost didn't sleep like a, a good night. I didn't have a good oh, wow. night's sleep for a month. And especially in that month, in, in general, since I, I did my startup, but especially in this month, I had to be very careful about my self-care. And um, I would make sure that I went to bed. So it's called sleep hygiene, that, you know, you be careful that you don't, like, watch movies late into the night, that you um, sleep at a certain bedtime, at a certain time that you make sure that your environment is quiet and like I was wearing a sleeping mask, stuff like that. Um, I, I use um, the app Calm and Headspace for meditation every day. They're, they're amazing and they're, they really do help. I think mindfulness, uh, we don't know a lot about it yet, but I think that it's very clear that it helps the brain and it helps people like calm down. It has, it's a wholesome um, effect on the body. Um, I, I worked out, I eat healthy and yeah. um, people are, loving what we do and i think people in general now are starting to open up about mental health like yes. even the rock you know the actor i know spoke about his mental health yes. so people like that if they speak up about mental health then it opens the pathway for other people to do the same do you think in our society mental health is still one of those areas like yeah. we are still hesitant to talk about these things absolutely stigma is is a huge issue especially in the workspace because culture often interprets mm -hmm. things like depression or anxiety as weakness, especially for men. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really hard for men to be outspoken about that because the mentality is anxiety is fear and fear is weakness, right? Like, are you a man or a mouse, right? These kind of things are so deeply ingrained yeah. in, in our little boys and our baby boys that to be able to shake that off and say you know my brain has a chemical imbalance your uh, liver has a chemical imbalance you get insulin i get a better blockers you know that mentality we still have ways to go for that and but it, it is speaking out and, and people like the rock and for him he's like he's the icon of manliness show that vulnerability about spoken about it, i think paved the way for a lot of young men or men to be able to, you know, see it and themselves accept it and be outspoken about it as well. In your professional experience, have you noticed any specific age group that has the most mental health related issues? We did aim it towards 18 to 28, but that's because that's when most of the mental illness um, uh, ex come out and they, they develop. Um, so that's if you catch someone while they're developing or they're about to develop it, that's you know ideal. Then you take them, they keep them out of the system, you keep them healthy. But funnily enough, our, our from our beta testers in Australia, New Zealand, guess guess what what kind of a cohort they are? I would say maybe mid thirties to forties. Men, thirty-five plus, are what? the biggest group of downloaders and gamers. Yes, hmm. yes, and I. I I'm sure there's a beautiful explanation for that, um, but we need more data, obviously, to be able to say that. But um, I, I'm very happy about that because, you know, we're reaching uh, more people than I thought we would, you know? And um, so, and at the end of the day, we're gonna go there where we need it. So in the next version, when we update, we might, you know, make 
make it a little bit more towards the people that are actually using it. Fair enough. And are you guys planning on kind of like doing a subscription model with this or it's going to be a paid app or it's going to stay free or those are still undecided? It's probably going to be in-app purchases. Okay. And um, I thought you, I think you said earlier if we we're going to work with like insurance companies or something yeah. like that. And we are actually speaking to different insurance companies that we could be actually using it as a, a tool that you know can get people keep people healthy or treat low level depression, keep them out of the system. And they get if you play it, you get coins, right? Yeah. And if you get enough coins, maybe you can deduct it from your insurance premium. Or like in sweat coins, you can actually buy something for it, you know? So the, the whole idea is that it's kind of like a, um, a mental health coin economy that you can use um, within the game or outside of the game. Hopefully you're not going towards the crypto side though. No. no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, I was like, come on. You, you don't want to be giving people extrinsic like cryptocurrency. Like then it becomes a mining app, right? No. no. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough. That's good. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Did you guys think about yeah. it at some point? I was thinking about it and then I looked at how much I had to learn to be able to do that. And I'm like, maybe <laughs> in three or four years, someone else can do that, but not right now, not me. <laughs> And is there going to be any kind of engagement with the community? There definitely will be and um, I hope to make user generated content as well that like people are able to actually write their own stories and then we just kind of like set them and add them to, to the mix. Yeah. That's wonderful. Awesome. Is there yeah. an AI component to it? Like have you used any of yeah. the chatbots kind of like? Um, that's what we were doing the crowd planning for. So, um, Dr. Joy, the avatar of the game, is built to be a, a bot and at one point that you can have a bit of a conversation with her. And we're using algorithm, AI algorithm, so that we can detect patterns. So for example, if you're playing the game, you're just playing the normal part, and we can detect patterns that show that you might be suffering from anxiety, that we can offer to you parts that's of awesome. the game that help with anxiety. Yeah. That's gonna be awesome. See, that's gonna take yeah. it to totally next level. How, how much time would you say as an entrepreneur and a founder you dedicate to PR and marketing? Oh God. How much of the time you actually spend towards actual development? I'm guessing this is your passion. Psychology is your passion. But when you yeah, go into yeah. entrepreneurship without sales, marketing, PR, yeah. you can't yeah. really make this happen, right? Yeah. It depends absolutely where you are in the process. So at okay. the beginning when we were developing the game, I was doing like 80% development and 20% PR and marketing and then now I'm doing 20% development and 80% fundraising and PR and marketing. Yeah. You started this company how long ago? Like two 2016 ago? was um, we uh, incorporated it and then in 2017 we finished the first fundraising round. Yeah, so it's 20. about two years now. That must have been like a mountain to climb. Like. I had no idea. That's a good thing. <laughs> but when you're a startup entrepreneur, you have no idea what's going to cost. So you're like, oh, this is a hill. Oh, there's another hill. There's another hill. <laughs> and then you walk through. All, all, all you yeah. had, like a dream, but you didn't know what you're going to be going through, right? Like, I mean, Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in, guys. In our part three, we'll be talking about fundraising 101 and productivity hacks and knowing when to quit. 